a teaser trailer in December 2023. The pilot in March 2024. Thanks for watching and have fun. If there's any party that's like, well, maybe stop. Go right. ahead and give it up now because it's painful. Yeah. And it's hard. <laughs> and what do you sacrifice? And it's going to require a, a, a personal, a great personal cost from you. You give it a piece of your soul. Really? It's true. One sixteenth to be exact. Well, this little maneuver is going to cost us 51 years. Your hands are going to be in every single part of this. It's only going to be good if you will it so. That was Parker Simmons, the creator and Emmy-winning voice actor for Cartoon Network's Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart, who I interviewed on this channel a few years ago, talking about the piece of you that undertaking such a large creative project takes. Recently, at the end of an international travel day for work, where we were awake in total 22 hours after two train rides, a nine-hour flight, an hour on the tarmac on both sides, mind and body starting to wear very thin, thinking we were almost in the clear, the final stretch ended up being another hour of waiting in the longest line for customs that I've ever been in. And despite the obvious headache that comes with all of that, the part that caused me personally the most anxiety is the fact that the friend who was picking us up had to wait for this unexpected additional two hours. The time that I said we'd be ready was delayed. Is that a common thing with airport runs? Of course. But I don't like the fact that some part of it was my doing. I like being accountable. Like, even though I probably couldn't have foreseen the extra time, maybe I could have. With that in mind, this will be my last update on the making of my animated pilot Storm Fellers before the trailer. Now let me tell you what this video isn't. It's not a video where someone with the beautiful privilege to have the time and resources and opportunity to make their own show complains about how hard it is. The fact that I am able in any way to make Stormfellers is awesome. It's exciting. But I think it would be irresponsible not to talk about the cost that comes with any creative endeavor, especially one that ends up being so large. Now, since the last update, three animators in total now have been chipping away at the remaining shots for the pilot. The last remaining character in it, the shopkeeper Algatha, was sculpted, retopologized, UV'd and textured, and rigged for animation. With animation largely taken care of by the animators, that's allowed me to focus on the environments and rendering looks for the show, and that brings us to the problem that I talked about in December. We basically encountered a series of technical glitches with our shading system. I tried to find someone who I could simply pay to solve it, but I ended up finally learning enough and fixing it myself with some help from folks like Southern Jadi, who by the way, just finished his own five year long short animated project that you should check out after this video. Ultimately, after figuring out some backup solutions that would get us most of the way there with shaders and that I will continue to use for background elements, I was finally able to fix and solve the major issues we were having with Lightning Boy Shader, and so it's finally back in business, which is honestly a huge relief. Now, starting with Algatha, I was able to use Substance Painter to more quickly generate a hand-painted surface that wasn't a purely flat color. And if you look at Biko side by side with his previous version and the new Substance Assisted version with some additional hand painting on top, you can see the improvement. And what this allowed me to do is figure out a shading system that makes objects appear mostly flat because we don't need as much lighting to show the intersection of overlapping things of the same color. Even though this meant going back and redoing a lot of work for each character's textures, I think it ends up being worth it. Okay, so that accounts for some of your time, you're saying. What else? Well, with that stuff figured out, I can work on the environments and props for the pilot. And really the idea here is to create composition and make appealing looking value to highlight the characters as if each shot were a 2D illustration, rather than making the kind of 3D environment that you'd walk around in, in a video game. That means some colors or shapes are simple, mainly so they don't distract from the characters. But the advantage of 3D means that objects will be visible in multiple shots without having to redraw them. And as much as I resisted the idea of not handcrafting it, using the hair system in Blender to get appealing looking, dynamic, wind blowable grass was too good to pass up, and we can control the color with an image texture. From here, still, we can create the multiple rendering passes for compositing, but honestly, I know it's been a while, but I don't think I'll really be happy with the environments until the final stages of production. Okay, so that accounts for some more time, but 
it's been months. There was a time you uploaded monthly, if not weekly. What's happening exactly? I never learned to juggle, and I don't think I've even tried to since I was like a kid. So this can only go poorly. That actually went worse than I thought it would. The funny thing about cost is that it's more than just money, which ironically in this case is still a huge part of it. If you wanted to know what the literal cost of making this series is, I have the absolute roughest estimate, which doesn't include things like my own time paying myself, the lengthy pre-production period, and the invisible costs along the way. Without considering any profit or overhead that you might have with a studio or by hiring for every position, my lowball estimate is somewhere between $100 and $150 for every second of final animated footage and audio that you see on screen. And if that seems high because you're an animator and you say, I only charge $50 an hour, there's, there's so much more that goes into it besides just the actual animating. I have explicitly told the people that work on my crew that they will be paid when they invoice and they will not be demanded of by me or forced to work outside of what they're comfortable with because I keep seeing tweets and hearing things about other indie animation projects with crunch and bad conditions and I've worked far too many industry gigs to ever want my show to be connected with something like that. No show is so good that the people hired to work on it should suffer. And I would encourage anyone else pursuing similar projects to do right by the people that help them. I might be languishing in the cost that I'll talk more about later in the video, but that isn't their fault. Over the past few months, in order to make sure my animators, riggers, sound people all get paid, I've been taking on a lot of extra work. Uh, in a time where things are rough for the industry overall, instead of just belt tightening and riding it out resourcefully like I'd probably do if it was just me, I've taken on lots and lots of extra client work. Uh, I just got back home from filming The One Thing overseas and have another big contract due in November. Uh, I've maintained my monthly Patreon work, making new full illustrations of Stormfeller's characters on a trading card print and sticker each month. I've done logos and 3D prints and full blender scenes and anything people need, even if it's sometimes not at a rate that's ideal. I've done work completely outside of my field, picking up odd jobs where local people need help. I've even started a full-on eBay side business, listing at least five items a day to satisfy that algorithm and shipping items daily. I've gradually spread myself further out, juggling more and more things, evenings eating into late nights, early mornings eating into restful sleep with less and less time left over. You can kind of see the remains of some shingles I got last month, uh, which I'm grateful didn't make it into my eye. Uh, it's a sort of stinging rash brought on by stress, and I'm mad that they still haven't fully cleared up. There's a part of me that knows kind of objectively that using my time in that way, instead of making new videos, new courses, running sales, is kind of stupid. Uh, like, you have a job and access to a lot of people through this internet thing. Why don't you just, like, run crowdfunding to finish, or ask or something. The thing is, remember us in line and customs, what was most important to me despite being exhausted in that final stretch was that someone was waiting for us, someone I'd asked to anticipate a specific time. He was fine, he wasn't upset, but I was that he had to wait. Um, I have been so privileged to have had you, an audience, for so many years now supporting this project, patiently waiting for it, buying courses, buying plushes, backing on Patreon. Uh, sure, you got something from it, and maybe that's all some people cared about, but you also supported those ways because you wanted this thing to succeed, and for me to succeed. And I gave estimates for times I thought it would be ready, and that time keeps getting pushed back because as much as I can plan for something to take, so many parts of this process are still unprecedented, and that's before any hiccups or setbacks like we've had. So even if I did have time or made time to make a video in the last few months, I'm tired of it not being done yet. Uh, is anyone like legitimately upset that my indie animation isn't done yet? Maybe, like a few at most, I'm, I'm probably overblowing it in my mind. I don't think I've actually seen any comments or anything like that expressing anything other than excitement, but that stuff still matters to me. I'm working as hard as I can on this, but I'm not okay with the fact that I'm giving you reason to think that it's not coming. Anything that you make creatively, if it's personal, if it matters to you, if you're sharing it, if you're trying to make it as good as it can be, it demands vulnerability from you. 
What if people don't like it? What if I mess up? You're sending your baby out into the world, hoping you did everything you can to make sure that it succeeds, and they still might not. You know, I guess that means I, I know what it's like to be a parent. But what? What? The energy that it takes from you is a piece of your soul that for some reason you're now juggling haphazardly in the air. The longer it takes for this thing to gestate and to not be done yet is weight, the juggling instruments getting heavier. And in this case, it would be one thing if I didn't say a word until the thing was done and out. But the fact that other people know about it taking so long is a feeling of debt to me. Thankfully, I've stayed out of literal financial debt, but it's the cost of the heavy soul juggling instruments fatiguing the muscles, repetitively throwing them in the air. For me, and perhaps for you too, the cost of making my own animated series is soul weight debt, at least for now. It's certainly not for my health. I tell you what, I didn't have gray hair before this. For me, I, I definitely had gray hair before this process, but either way, he's right. I, I'm not trying to scare anybody necessarily, because <laughs> it is also fun, but it is not some... I think a lot of the people who just cavalierly say, I want to have my own show someday. I'm like, no, you right. just want to see something really good. You yeah. want to actually have your own show, because it's very, very hard to do, and it's going to require... A, a personal, a great personal cost from you. You don't have to be an insane hermit, but you're going to have to make some sacrifices, I'm trying to say. Yeah, in order for sure. To, in order to, to make a dream uh, come true. And I, I, you know what, though? I think most people know that. Hey, by the way, apropos of nothing, we, we have a voice for every member of the Stormfellers crew now, right? Uh, Quilver is voiced by himself, Glangor by me, Biko by the amazing Louis Zong. And that just leaves us with Asius, right? Let's fix that. It's Emmy-winning voice actor Parker Simmons. Something I'm still not quite over. New character design forge videos in April. Stormfellers trailer soon. Course critique and backpack links in the description. Thank you for the support. Thanks for watching, and have fun creating.